they have moved very, very clearly away from just cannabis as their main drug trade into heroin, MDMA, cocaine, methamphetamine. The Mafia's web podcast two-year investigation reveals how the Mafia took over Australia's drug trade. And it explains how police in Italy and Australia are cracking down on the multinational criminal empire with the help of Mafia members who've turned informants, including Emanuele Mancuso. He's an educated man uh, and he's decided that essentially to save his family's future and his sons and daughters' future, he needs to break away from the family in, himself. His testimony is a key testimony in the breaking up a family. But there are real people behind the Mafia's web. Anna Sergi grew up with Luigi Mancuso, Emanuele's uncle and the main Mafia boss on trial in Italy. It was kind of like normality. You, you sort of grew up, it's like, okay, that's, that's how it is. You don't question it. It's just, you know, that's okay, that's it. Those bosses in Italy set up the Mafia in Australia and in a lot of cases still pull some of the strings. There was that level of control uh, that was extended out of the genesis of the Calabrian Mafia into Australia. The Mafia came to Australia mainly from one small town in Calabria, and they kept the crime in the family. There was only 9,000 people living in Plotty in, in between the, the, the 50s and the 70s. 5,000 of those 9,000 people came to Australia most of them to Griffith in New South Wales, which was an, a major stronghold of the Calabria Mafia in Australia. But the Mafia is changing, as prosecutor Nicola Grateri revealed in a translated interview with the podcast. Some of the new generation are breaking the code of silence. The difference is the old generation were very resilient. They could stand really long trials and 20 or 30 years in jail and just be very firm and not have any problems. The new generation are more fragile and some of them also collaborate with the justice. 